Good morning. Um, could you please just state your name for the record? Timothy Blank. And you've testified previously in this trial. Yes. Um, during the course of this investigation, you were one of the detectives in charge of warrants and subpoenas for documents and business records. Yes. Um, and did you, during the course of the investigation, in fact, um, write a search warrant or subpoena for TDS? Yes. And why did you write a warrant or subpoena for TDS? In reviewing records from um, Google, we noted a consistent trend of IP addresses being used to log into various Google accounts. And what is an IP address? An IP address is an internet protocol address. It's essentially a series of numbers, or in some cases, letters and numbers, that identify either a specific network or a specific device used to connect to other devices or networks on the internet. And generally speaking, assuming that a home only has one internet account, would the activity that went through that home's Wi-Fi have the same IP address? Yes. So if you were at 4595 Oak Springs Drive, you would, and you use their Wi-Fi, you would have the TDS account that that home paid for. That yes. Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as 483 and 484. Could you please identify 483 and 484? 483 is a certification of business records from TDS. And 484 is the records themselves. Okay. And do they give you the IP address for, for the 4595 Oak Springs Circle address in Windsor, Wisconsin? Yes. And what is that IP address? 69.130.255.2. And that's the account that Bart Halderson paid for. That was his internet user, or his internet company was TDS. Yes. Okay. At this time, I would move 43 and 484 into evidence. No objection. They are received. Counsel, at what point would you like me to read the stipulation regarding the business records? After this witness? Sure. Okay, very good. And as already been explained to the jury, um, there was a bunch of email accounts in this case that became relevant or of interest. Yes. And those included Aaron Hoover at gmail.com, Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com, um, as well as Chandra Halderson at gmail.com, Daniel at gmail.com, and chaninja at gmail.com. Yes. Okay. And did you write warrants for those various accounts? Yes, I did. And then I'm going to show you what has been marked as 479, 480, 482, 450. 451, 452, as well as 453. How would you describe these various documents as a group? These are all Google records for various Gmail accounts. Okay, and let's go through them um, one by one. 451, what is a doc exhibit 451? 451 appears to be the Certificate of Authenticity from Google Incorporated for Chandler Halderson at gmail.com as well as chninjalderson at gmail.com. So not that uncommon. People often have more than one email. Correct. Okay. Um, and they both have part of his name in that. Um, I, does this appear to be a true and accurate copy of what you received from Google? Yes. I would move exhibit 451 into evidence. No objection. It is received. 452, how would you describe 452 to the jury? 452 is also a certificate of authenticity for Chandler Halderson at gmail.com, as well as a uh, chninjalderson at gmail.com. 
Okay. True and accurate copy? Yes. I would move exhibit 452 into evidence. No objection. It is received. And the dates are just different on those, a different date range of emails, records. Correct. Okay. Um, exhibit 450, how would you identify exhibit 450? 450 is also a certificate of authenticity for Chandler Halderson at gmail.com. Also from Google. Again, different dates than the other two. I would move exhibit 450 into evidence. No objection. It is received. 482. How would you describe document 482? 482 is a certificate of authenticity for aaron.hoovermatc at gmail.com, Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com, Spieth Daniel at gmail.com, and Jack Strap Cowboy 625 at gmail.com. I would move 482 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. How would you describe 480? 480 is Google subscriber information for Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com. And that has information such as when the account was created, the IP address, and other such information. Yes. I would move 480 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. How would you describe document 481? 481 is the subscriber information for spiethdaniel at gmail.com. And again, has all that information such as creation date, backup phone, etc. Yes. I would move 481 into evidence. No objection. It is received. And finally, 479. How would you describe document 479? 479 is the Google subscriber information for aaron.hoovermatc at gmail.com. All right, and I would move 479 into evidence. No objection. It is received. And for, I would also move 453, which is just a USB of the records already. No. In evidence. No objection. It is received. Now, a lot of this is somewhat technical information, not particularly user friendly to people that aren't technologically inclined like myself. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, so we put together this chart, Exhibit 565. How would you describe Exhibit 565? 565 is a listing of the email accounts we've discussed, along with their dates of creation, the IP address of creation, the subscriber for each IP address, as well as the recovery phone number for, each, for the accounts, and the date of birth for the accounts. Okay. At this time, I would move, and you checked this information and made sure it was the same information in all of these documents. Yes. Okay, I would move 565 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. All right, and here's just a copy of 565. I would ask to publish. You may publish. Oh. warming up. Detective, there's some known information also on this chart, Exhibit 565, um, towards the bottom. And one of those is the IP address of 45950 Oak Spring Circle? Yes. Okay. And that's the IP address starting with 69? Yes. And then we also have Chandler Halderson's birthday. And what is that date? March 15th of 1998. And that was gathered from a driver's license and also from the interview of Mr. Halderson? Yes. And we also have Chandler Halderson's phone number, which was 920-838-4549. Yes. And that was confirmed via phone records from the company? Yes. issue there, so I'm going to attach it to my computer.
do I get it to my... Is it warming up, Lindsay? It is. Come here. That's working. Yeah. Let's go ahead and turn that. Okay. Creation address. 69.130.255.56. And again, that is the IP address associated with the Oak Sink Spring Circle. Yes. And uh, was a recovery phone number used in a G setting up that account? No. And a recovery phone number, again, is a phone number that you can put in when you create an email address in case you ever forget your password. Correct. Okay. And what was the date of birth of the, that is listed under that account? February 11th of 1988. Let's move to Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com. What is the IP address of creation? August 18th of 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the date of creation. Uh, what is the IP address? 69.130.255.56. So again, the Bart Halderson internet account. Yes. So that email was created connected to that Wi-Fi. Yes. And what if any recovery phone number was listed? There is none. And what date of birth was listed? March 15th of 1998. Chandler Halderson's birthday. Yes. All right, what about Chandler Halderson at gmail.com? What was the date of creation? January 20th of 2020. And what was the IP address of creation? 69.130.255.56. Again, the Halderson address is Wi-Fi. Yes. And what was the recovery phone number for the Chandler Halderson Gmail? 920-838-4549. And the date of birth posted? March 15th of 1998. And speakdaniel at gmail.com. What was the date of creation? August 5th, 2020. And what was the IP address of creation? 68.113.249.195. So that one is on a different Wi Fi account? Yes. Okay. What is the recovery phone number for speakdaniel at gmail.com? 920-838-4549. So Chandler Holderson's phone number is the phone number for the recovery? Yes. And what is the date of, date of birth listed for speakdaniel at gmail.com? March 15th of 1998. Chandler Holderson's birthday? Yes. <clears throat> So detective, during the course of this investigation, did you also download some phones? Yes. How do you download a phone? <laughs> the phone needs to be connected to a computer um, running appropriate forensic software um, and then perform a data acquisition from the device. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. The phone needs to be connected to a computer running forensic software and then you're able to acquire data from a device. And you always get the same sort of data with every type of phone? No. Explain that. 
there's a number of reasons why we get different data from different devices. First of all, um, different devices retain different types of information. Um, for example, a brand new iPhone is going to retain different data versus an Android phone. Um, older phones def typically do not retain the same information as well. There's a variety of reasons why phones don't all retain the same type of information. And in this case, one of the phones that you dumped or downloaded was an old-fashioned flip phone. Yes. And um, I'm approaching you with Exhibit 550. How would you describe Exhibit 550? Exhibit 550 is an extraction report. Um, and for what phone was Exhibit 550 the extraction report for? That was a flip phone that was submitted. These are often called burner phones. Yes. Because you can pay as you go and throw them away when you're done. Yes. Um, and is this the phone in particular that you, I will let you look at that, that you downloaded in document 550? Yes. Um, I would move exhibit 550 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. And because it's a flip phone, what sort of information, if any, were you able to get off of a flip phone? I was not able to extract any data from the phone itself. Were you able to determine what the phone number was yes. for this burner phone? Yes. And what is the phone number of this burner phone? The phone number is 608-598-7868. Investigation. Were you also, did you download a phone that was associated with Bart Halderson? Yes. And what sort of data, if any, were you able to get from Bart Halderson's phone? From his phone, we recovered a variety of data, including photographs, videos, uh, call logs, text content, um, I believe some web browsing history. Yes. And if I bring you some iPhones, would you be able to tell which one? Possibly. I know it's one of these two. I mean, it's okay if you can't. But it was the one associated with Bart Halderson. Yes. That was hidden in a shoe with his driver's license. Yes. Okay. And what, and you were able to download his data into some sort of report? Yes. Describe that. When the data is acquired from the phone, essentially you have raw data, which is not really useful to the layperson. Um, so we move the data to the physical analyzer program, which then allows for a much more user-friendly viewing of the data. And what sort of information can you get from a phone like Bart's? Again, we see photographs that may be saved. We may see videos, um, phone call logs, um, text content, um, contacts. Um, for example, if I entered um, you as a contact in my phone, I would get a list of those contacts. Um, possibly web browser history. Okay. And I'm showing you what has been marked as 497. Could you please describe exhibit 497? 497 is the USB drive of the download from Bart Halderson's cell phone. And you provided a true and accurate copy of that download? Yes. All right, I would move exhibit 497 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. Right. No further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, turning first uh, to that phone download 
process that you just talked about. Yes. How many how many phones did you download for that data acquisition in connection with this case? With this case? I believe two. Those would be Bart's phone and who else? Ms. Melender's phone. Now, when you download those phones and create these reports, um, do you look at them to see what they contain or do you just simply give those reports to others who look for things of evidentiary value? It depends on the case. What did you do in this case? In some cases, I, I believe I did view some of the evidence, yes. So the information you downloaded was reviewed and anything of evidentiary value from the Sheriff's Department's view um, was found, correct? Uh, possibly. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, when you write reports, if you do something, or if you look at something and you determine it's not relevant to the case, you might write in that report no evidentiary value. Correct. That's the only thing I have. Thank you. Redirect. Nothing. May this witness be excused? Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good rest of your day. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the district attorney and the attorneys for the defendant have stipulated and agreed to the existence of certain facts, and you must accept these facts as conclusively proved. The parties stipulate that the records produced by the below companies and organizations are authentic records, and there is no dispute to the accuracy of the records. Wisconsin law provides that records produced by businesses and organizations can be considered self-authenticating when certain conditions are met. The parties stipulate such conditions have been met regarding the records in this case. This, this stipulation concerns records produced by, number one, Apple Inc., number two, Discord Inc., number three, Google Inc., number four, Madison College, number five, PayPal Inc., number six, Settlers Bank, number seven, Snap Incorporated, number eight, Square Incorporated, number nine, TDS Communications LLC, number 10, US Cellular, and finally, number 11, UW Health slash CIOX Health. Thank you. As one of the two lead case detectives on this case, uh, was one of your roles to review uh, the email accounts that we just heard Detective Blank testify about getting all those records? Yes. And when I say review these email accounts, did you in fact go through and read all of the emails? Yes. Okay. Um, so specifically, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, four different email accounts. Uh, Chandler Halderson at gmail.com. Spieth Daniel at gmail.com, Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com, and Aaron Hoover at gmail.com. Did you review those email accounts? Yes, I did. As it goes to Mr. Spieth, Ms. Brandt, and Mr. Hoover, um, we're going to talk about essentially the entirety of those email accounts, correct? That's correct. From creation through when you got access to them. That's correct. As it comes to Mr. Halderson, uh, Chandler Halderson at gmail.com, um, that was his personal email? Yes. Were there an extensive amount of emails in that account? I'd say there were. Okay. Um, did you review those emails? Yes. Uh, were there ever any emails uh, to or from uh, anyone at American Family Insurance indicating that Mr. Halderson worked there in any capacity? Specifically American Family, no. Um, when it comes to the company SpaceX, were there ever any emails uh, regarding a job application or employments with SpaceX? No. Um, does the word SpaceX come up, in fact, at all in any of those Gmail, uh, Mr. Halderson's Gmail account? No. Okay. Does uh, this document contain messages, emails, uh, this is 549 I'm showing you, uh, that were pulled out by you and, and other members of law enforcement uh, in what you believe to be relevant to this case? Okay. 
Yes. Okay. I'll move exhibit number 549 into evidence. Any objection other than as noted? No. And I'll note for the record 575 uh, is a USB containing it for display and I'd move 575 into evidence and ask to publish it. Those exhibits are received and may be published. All right. So when we're talking about Mr. Halderson's actual Gmail account, um, were there emails in that accounts in between him and these people, supposedly someone named Mr. Spieth, Ms. Brandt, and Mr. Hoover? Did Mr. Halderson's own Gmail account contain those messages? Yes. Um, and for purposes of what we're going to look at just first, talking about Mr. Halderson's Gmail account, um, we did not include those because we're going to look at them when we look at these accounts, right? That's correct. Okay. What types of messages were you looking for uh, when looking at Chandler Halderson at gmail.com? What were you trying to figure out? Um, any communication um, with anyone from Madison College, um, anything related to his employment, either at SpaceX or American Family, um, any communications um, with his parents, um, anyone else. Um, if we identified somebody within the email that we would like to contact, um, then we went and maybe did an interview of somebody uh, within that email. Okay. Uh, so we're going to look at a number of emails, and we'll start with number 30. Um, We'll just start here. This doesn't look like a normal email. Uh, it's in a different format. Tell us about the format that we're looking at these in. Sure. Um, as Detective Blank just spoke to, um, the data that he provides us to review as case detectives is within the Cellbrite Reader program. Um, and so we can generate reports from the emails. Um, and again, this is just number 30 uh, within the report we created. Um, Sure. On the left is the number 30, the timestamp and date, and then the subject of the emails uh, goes to the right of your screen. Sure. And so this one will just talk about its, its, its makeup, and we won't do that for all of them. So 30 is a number created by Selb, right, on the far left. That just is the number of the email? That's correct. All right. Uh, the timestamp uh, there, it says uh, June 7, 2021, uh, at 8, uh, 13 a.m., as we go through this, we won't talk about time a lot, but is that time specifically accurate in this program? Uh, in this program, in this particular report, it is not. Um, so the UTC minus five um, is in regards to, um, you actually should add the five hours back to the email time. Um, Detective Blank informed me that the Google records were actually received in our central time and Cellbrite Reader program um, subtracted five hours. So while the times might not be super relevant today, but if the jury looks at that, they should just think it's, it's plus five hours each time. That's correct. Okay. And so then at the very top of the, the column on the right, we have the subject of the email, which is the subject line we always think of in an email. Yes. And here it's email from MATC. And the body, that's the actual email that was sent. Yes, it is. All right. And we have uh, this one, Chaz, I did not receive the email string regarding the appointment on Thursday. Please send to me, uh, sign Bart Halderson. And Bart Halderson's email is, is what? Uh, B Halderson at BDO.com. Uh, what is BDO? Uh, it was Bart's place of employment. Okay. His accounting firm? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you went through these emails and pulled out one's uh, relevance, as you've discussed, and so we'll start going through those. Talk to me about email 20. Uh, if you could just, uh, we have to read it into the record, of course. So I'll just say that it was on June 11th, 2021. Uh, the subject was HR. What did that email read? Did you email HR to inquire about your paycheck? Unless there is something that you are not telling us, they have had ample time to pay you. Bart Halderson. And that was from Bart to Chandler. That's correct. Email 19 on June 11, 2021. Uh, the subject re HR um, from Chandler to Bart. Could you uh, read the response essentially? I added him to my room queue, so hopefully soon. Again, on the same day, we have email number 18. Uh, the subject is payment, and it's from Chandler to someone named Tom Selznick at protonmail.com. Could you read the body of that email? Good afternoon. My name is Chandler Halderson. I was recently made aware of you taking my case. Can I have an explanation of why I haven't been paid yet? Thank you, Chandler. And then if you look at the time on this one, it would just delay, it's 8.49.35. Um, but shortly after that, on, on June 11th, um, we're obviously we're adding that five hours. So June 11th, 2021, Mr. Selznick, someone named Tom Selznick at ProtonMail.com, emails Chandler Halderson uh, in response. What does he say? 
Hi Chandler, I was given your case on Tuesday. However, I have contacted your payroll company and have determined a few issues. One, you are registered as salary, however you are making an hourly wage. Two, for two months the payroll company saw your name and dues as a clerical error. Unfortunately, you have been making 25 an hour when your salary states you should be making 61,000 annually. This is around a $10,000 difference annually. When I get in contact with payroll, I will show them exactly when you were switched and find out why there was a delay on your dues. Have a great rest of your Friday, Tom Selznick. Tom Selznick, Northeast Remote Human Recourses Manager. Okay. Email 16 uh, on the same day, June 11th, um, from Selznick to Chandler. Um, could you read that? I updated the log and changed your dues. I'll let payroll know of the change. Keep an eye on your bank account and let me know if you have not been paid by next Friday. Tom Selznick. Northeast, oh sorry. You can continue. Uh, Northeast Remote Human Recourses Manager. Um, number 13, this is again June 11th from Chandler uh, back to Mr. Selznick. Um, what does it read? When is payday for me? I was wondering when I'd get paid. From email 12, same day, June 11th, 2021, from Mr. Selznick to Mr. Alderson. What does it read? First payment ASAP, then the first Friday of each month. Tom Selznick. Email 10, from Mr. Alderson to Mr. Selznick uh, on the 17th of June now. What does it read? Good evening, I was hoping to hear the status of my check. Is there anything wrong or holding it back from being delivered? I recently had to go to the emergency room, so I will need my check ASAP. Thank you, Chandler. Email nine, uh, June 18th, uh, from Mr. Selznick to Mr. Halderson. Uh, the subject is still regarding payment. Uh, could you read the body of that email? Good morning, Chandler. I will make some calls when your office opens to speed things along. I'm sorry to hear about your trip to the ER. That's never fun. I do appreciate your patience with this, Tom Selznick. Okay. Email number seven on the 18th of June from Mr. Selznick, Mr. Halderson, still regarding payment. Uh, could you read the body of that email? I will be traveling to Madison, Wisconsin, Wednesday of next week for restructuring of the HR department. It seems there is a lack of communication to be resolved. I will hope to meet you in person and have a sit down on Thursday if you are capable of travel. Tom Selznick. Email six on the 18th of June uh, from Mr. Halderson to Mr. Selznick. Could you read the body of that email? Yes, that will work fine. I look forward to meeting with you. Thank you, Chandler. Um, now to email four uh, from Mr. Selznick to Mr. Halderson on the 24th of June, uh, subject meeting times. Uh, what did Mr. Selznick reportedly say here? Good morning, Chandler. I'm holding a board meeting this afternoon to discuss the changes I've made to the department. If I am able to meet with you today, I will join your room around lunch over team viewer. My apologies for the inconvenience. However, there would not be enough members tomorrow to hold the committee. Email number three from Mr. Halderson to Mr. Selznick. Uh, meeting times, could you read the body of that email? I will be available 12 to 5 p.m. today in my room. I would like to be kept up to date with any news regarding my case. Thank you, Chandler. Okay. That person, Tom Selznick, we heard about a lot of subpoenas from, from Alyssa Brandt and Hoover and Chandler, all at gmail.com. Tom Selznick at ProtonMail, um, dot com. Were you able to subpoena Proton Mail? Uh, we did not subpoena Proton Mail. What goes into that decision or why not? Uh, after reviewing the emails, uh, Detective Shunk and I had a conversation with Detective Plank, Blank in regards to the Proton Mail, uh, and we learned that it's an email server based out of Switzerland. Um, so, based upon that information, uh, we opted to not uh, draft a subpoena for the records, and we um, decided to contact American Family directly to ask if Tom Selznick was an employee there. Sure, and you made contact with those people. We did. And in fact, we're going to hear from them today? Yes. Okay. I'll take back this exhibit from you. Okay. 
showing that's been marked in this case is exhibit number 478. If you could page through that real quick and let me know what that is. Exhibit 478 appears to be the speethdaniel at gmail.com. Uh, emails from the Google search warrant return. Okay. I'll move that exhibit to evidence and publish it. Any objection? Other than Nothing the further. Very good. It is received. So when it comes to Mr. Speeth, and, and I'll just let you keep it in case you just need to reading. That's exhibit number 478. We're going to look at the entirety of the email, meaning all the emails sent from that account. That's correct. Um, and so why are we looking at, at email 20? What does this show us? Um, this was the first email uh, sent to this account. Um, so there were 20 emails total. Uh, this particular email, uh, reading the subject line, is finished setting up your new Google account um, August 5th, 2020. In your experience, is this the email you get when you set up a new Google account right away? It is. Uh, email 19. Um, so the, the account was set up on August 5th, and then right away on, on that same day, of 2020, Mr. Speak at gmail.com uh, emails Mark Alderson at wirr.com and Chandler Alderson at gmail.com. Um, subject Zoom meeting. The B. Halderson at wirr.com. Was that another one from Mr. Alder Clark Alderson's emails? Yes. Okay. Uh, what does this email say on the day of creation? Hello, my name is Daniel Spieth. I just spoke to Chandler on the phone earlier today and I will be handling this ticket. Unfortunately, I will not be able to hold the meeting until Tuesday the 11th at 10.30 a.m. If there are any conflicts, please let me know as soon as possible to reschedule. When the call starts at 10.15, I will send the link. Zoom is a browser application that will need access to your camera and microphone, so be sure to allow them when prompted. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Daniel Spieth. Email 18, uh, 5th, from Mr. Spieth to Mr. Halverson and Chandler. Uh, what, what are we looking at there? Uh, it appears it's um, an email sent with no um, subject or body. 17, um, just... Again, August 5th, from Clark Halverson up to Daniel Speed. Uh, we, regarding the Zoom meeting, what is it reading about? Daniel, that time will work. Please send Zoom details to my work email, bhalderson at bdo.com. Thank you, Bart. Email 16, uh, the 10th of August, 2020, from Mr. Speed to Mr. Bart Halderson. Uh, the subject is schedule alteration. Uh, what does Mr. Speed have to say here? First of all, I apologize. Recently, I have had a close family member become infected with coronavirus. I will appoint a coworker to the ticket of Chandler Halderson as soon as possible. I will be in the office, log on on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Chandler, call me at 9 a.m. tomorrow for further details. I apologize for any inconvenience. Daniel Speed. Number 15, uh, the 26th of August, 2020. Um, what is this email? This is an email from Google in regards to a security alert that a new device has signed into the account of speakdaniel at gmail.com. The exhibit's up there. Number 14, um, same type of thing. Yes, again, this is a, an email from Google, uh, the subject being Daniel finished setting up your Apple iPhone with the latest Google apps. Um, in regards to setting up, it appears to be a new phone associated um, to the account. And these are just emails in your experience. Do these emails just come through on email accounts when random things happen? You're using a new device or something along those lines? Yes, that's correct. Nothing weird about this? No. Um, talk about email 13. Are you aware of what this is? 26th of August, 2020. Yeah, this just appears to be an email sent to Bart Halderson from Daniel Spieth, uh, no subject line and no body within that email. 
Email 12, 26 of August 2020, from Mr. Spieth to Mr. Halderson, subject meeting, what did the body say there? Good morning. Chandler was recently informed his counselor was not going to be able to make it to her meetings for the day, so he gave me a call. I will remotely... I will be remotely conducting his meeting today. He also sent me a list of topics to have ready. I have full access to the servers, so I have the information. He gave me your contact information. Does 9.30 or 10 work for you to answer a call? Speak to you soon, Daniel Spieth. Email 11, the 26th again. Mr. Spieth, Mr. Halverson, what is that? I have approved his renewable energy certificate. Is the address on file 4595 Oak Springs Circle, DeForest, Wisconsin, correct? Email 10, number 26, Mr. Halverson, Mr. Speed. What does that email say? I can make either work. I just need to be done by 1115. Eight, Halverson, Mr. Speed. Um, now we're on the 26th. Still on the 26th. What does that email say? I believe Chandler is in a meeting with a potential employer until 10. Did he say it was okay to have the call without him? You know, seven, Mr. Halderson and Mr. Speed, uh, on May 9th, September 2020, the subject the status update. Uh, what did Bart Halderson say to Mr. Speed at this time? Daniel, can you please give me an update on Chandler's account? I need to know the following items. Has his account been set up so that he can request transcripts? Has the national database been updated so that student aid can see that he is registered as an FT, uh, meaning full-time student? When will we receive his certificate for completing the solar energy program? Thank you. Email 6, 23rd. October now, Mr. Halderson and Mr. Speed. What are we looking at there? Uh, the subject is progress update. Daniel, will you please provide me a summary of where you are resolving the open items for, for Chandler? New, act, new account is active, registered in the IT degree program, able to sign up for spring semester classes. Transcripts can be generated and pick, picked up. Solar certificate has been signed and will be sent. National database has been updated for financial aid. Thank you, Bart Halderson. Alderson to Daniel Speed, regarding college transcripts, on November 2nd, 2020. Could you tell us what Chandler told Mr. Speed? Good morning, Mr. Spieth. Could you please send my transcripts to my home address? There is a program with my insurance to help save me money with a good GPA. If you or someone you trust could do that as soon as possible, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Chandler Halderson. Email four. Um, on November 18th, 2020, um, what is the sustainable email that you can see from YouTube with your Gmail account? Yep, this is, it appears to just be an email from YouTube in regards to changes for terms of service. Email three um, from Mr. Speed uh, to Chandler Alderson, I think it was cut off there. Uh, what does this one read? Uh, the subject is federal and insurance. Uh, the body reads, Dear Chandler, I believe I have finally gotten through to your federal loans and am getting squared away with them. I, I am also drafting your letter for insurance. Would a PDF copy work for you? And you have the book in front of you, just because it's cut off. We sure. should confirm who is uh, Email three is to Chandler Halderson at gmail from Daniel Spieth at gmail.com. Number two, uh, now we're into December 9, 2020. Uh, just another Google email at that time. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and uh, one, we're looking at the same thing. Yes. Now, when it comes to Mr. Daniel Spieth, so Spieth Daniel at gmail.com, we've already looked at exhibit number 565. Um, Was the phone number, the backup recovery phone number used to create this Daniel Speed email, was that Chandler Halderson's cell phone? Yes, it was. And was the birthday that was used when he created that Daniel Speed Google account, was that Chandler Halderson's birthday? Yes, it is. And in reviewing the 
accountant, Mr. Speed, who's purporting to be a, an advisor of some sort at MATC, um, did he ever advise any students other than Chandler Halverson? No, he did not. Okay. So we'll take uh, just maybe one minute. Council's looking at the next next exhibit, so everyone can take oh, a minute. I can stop. Very good. Pardon. Oh, I can st I can stop it for. Oh no, yeah, finish up. Oh, you need it. I've had enough time to see it. Oh. Um, I'm showing you now what's been marked in this case, exhibit number 477. What is this document here? Exhibit 477 uh, is the Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com uh, email return for this account from Google. And uh, in the course of working on this case, as a case detective, did you review the Alyssa Brandt 64 email? Yes, I did. And we're going to look at those, are we not? Yes. All right, I'll move to publish that exhibit. Yeah. You may. Oh, I, I think it has to be moved to receive. I'll move, I'll move it and yes, publish it. Thank you. And it is received. Uh, uh, any, any specific objections at this time? Nothing in addition to my prior objection. It is received. Okay. Um, so what are we looking at the email 47? Uh, email 47 is an email from Google in regards to finish setting up your Google account uh, sent when the account was created. So we're looking at August 18th, 2020. Correct. So is there some overlap with all of these emails, the speed, the Hoover, the, the brand? There's going to be some overlap in time. Is there not? Yes, there is. Uh, let's talk about email 46 uh, from Chandler Halverson, the day this account was created. Uh, on the 18th. Chandler Halverson is something named Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com. The subject is scheduled times. Could you tell us what the body says? Good morning, Alyssa. We spoke on the phone yesterday, and I was wondering if you had sent if you had sent the email to B Halderson at BDO.com. If you could at your earliest convenience, that would be great. Thank you, Chandler. Email 45. And on the 18th, uh, Miss Brandt. Uh, to Mr. Halderson, uh, regarding schedule times, could you read the body of that I apologize for the late reply. I am currently waiting on two advisors to send in their open times. And I'm glad you sent an email because I had the address of bhalderson at bmo.com. I will have the times before the end of the workday. 44, on the 19th. August 2020, Mr. Halverson, Bart Halverson, uh, to Alyssa Grant 64. Uh, Lately, Chandler Halverson is the subject. If you read the body of that. Alyssa, I wanted to reach out since I have not received an email from you with tentative dates and times to discuss Chandler's account and student stand status. As you might be aware, this is causing issues with financial aid and insurance, but also giving me other concerns. Thank you for your prop prompt attention to this matter as we have been trying to resolve this for countless months. Email 43, the 19th of August 2020. Ms. Brandt, Mr. Halderson. Regarding Chandler Halderson, could you read the body of that? Good afternoon. Currently, we have a shortage of advisors, so the earliest I could make time for Chandler is on Wednesday the 26th at 10.30 a.m. However, two advisors still have not returned my email, but I will let you know as soon as they get back to me. I was waiting to hear from them this morning because Chandler made a point to have it held yet this week. I have already sent a second follow-up email to the two advisors and to the financial aid manager. I apologize for the delay, Alyssa. Number 42, the 19th of August, 2020, Mr. Halderson uh, to Alyssa Brantz uh, regarding Chandler Halderson. Could you read the body of that? 
Thank you for the update. I blocked the time on the 26th, but would also like to resolve sooner. My wife and I are off on Friday and could meet in person if it would help to resolve this. Email 41, now on the 25th of August, 2020, um, uh, from uh, Bart Halderson to Alyssa Brandt. Uh, could you read that email? Alyssa, I have not received any updates for the call meeting tomorrow. I assume this is a call or virtual meeting, but have not received the dial-in information. If this is an in-person meeting, I need to know where we are meeting. Can you confirm that this is still on the calendar and who we will be talking with? Thank you. Email 40, 26 of August, 2020. Uh, just a Google email again? That's correct. Okay. 39. Same thing? Yes. Uh, 38, uh, a YouTube email, correct? That's correct. YouTube is owned by Google, and that's why there's some interaction in the programs? Yes. OK. Uh, 37, we're looking at another data email from Google. 36, are we looking at the same thing? That's correct. OK. 35, uh, same thing. Uh, 34. So when we get to 34, we're talking now we're, we've moved forward quite a bit. Um, May 24th of, of this past year, 2021, uh, the subject is reschedule. It's from Chandler to Alyssa Brandt 64. Could you read the body of that email? Good morning. My name is Chandler Halderson. Unfortunately, I haven't taken well to the vaccine and I'm not feeling well enough to make it to my appointment with Aaron Hoover at 10 a.m. today. Is there another time within the week I could reschedule to? Thank you, Chandler. It, a couple questions about this email as we, we go through. This is the first mention that you saw of someone named Aaron Hoover? Yes, it was. And that's another email account we're going to talk about? Yes. Okay. Um, let's go to message 33. Uh, this is on May 25th, uh, 2021, from Alyssa Brandt to Chandler Halderson uh, regarding rescheduling, uh, or reschedule, excuse me. Could you read the body of that email? Good morning, Chandler. I'm sorry to hear you are not feeling well. I didn't have the best experience with it either. I moved you to Monday at 10 a.m. with Aaron. Starting next week, any guest in the building without their student ID is required to have their vaccine card and driver's license. I hope you feel better soon, Alyssa. Email 32, uh, the 25th again of May. Ms. Brandt, it's Mr. Halderson uh, regarding that reschedule. What does that say? There is an opening on Friday at 2 p.m. with Aaron. Would you like that slot? Email 31, 25th of May. Mr. Halderson to Ms. Brandt, uh, same subject line. What does that say? Unfortunately, I can't take any time off this week because of the two days I'm missing from work already. So Monday still will be best. Thanks. Number 30, uh, same day. Uh, Mr. Halderson to Ms. Brandt. Um, same subject line, what does that say? Is there a possibility of getting my meeting back or could I get the Friday? 29, same day, Mr. Halderson and Ms. Brandt. Um, what do we have there? Anything would work this week if not today. Email 28, again on the 25th, Mr. Halderson to Alyssa Brandt. Uh, same subject line, what does that say? I'm sorry to be pushy. I forgot that it was a holiday weekend and we'll push through to go to my meeting. Email 27. Now we have an email from Alyssa Brandt uh, responding to Chandler Halderson in that same subject line. Uh, what does that email read? Unfortunately, I've already bumped the waiting list into place. I'll put you in the number one slot to see if you can get in today. Otherwise, the next appointment is on Friday at 2 p.m. Number 26, again on the 25th, Mr. Halderson to Alyssa Brandt, same subject line. Uh, could you read that? I appreciate it. I will be available at any time you give me. Even a video call today would work. My dad only has a few hours off today. Email 25, uh, on the 25th of May, Alyssa Brandt emailing Chandler Halderson back in the same subject uh, line. What does that email read? I will give you a call as soon as I find an opening. Until then, you have Friday at 2 p.m. I hope it can work for you. Number 24, on the 28th of May, Ms. Brandt uh, 
uh, emails Chandler Halderson, uh, subject line schedule changes. What does that say? Dear students, keep watch for scheduling changes. We are short staffed today and there, there likely will be day and time shifts for your meeting. Keep an eye out for an email or call from either me or your advisor. Have a great weekend, Alyssa Brandt. Um, just briefly, um, maybe this is a good email to point it out. In the email itself, um, Brandt is spelled B-R-A-N-T, is that correct? That's correct. What is the registered name? How is that spelled? Uh, Alyssa is spelled the same, A-L-Y-S-S-A, -S -S -A, and the last name is B-R-A-N, N is in Nancy, D is in David, T is in Tom. So B-R-A-N-D-T. And in the actual email body, when she uses the last name, it's, it's without the D, but just with the T. That's correct. Okay. Email 23, um, 28th of May, Chandler Halderson emails Alyssa Brandt um, regarding the schedule changes. What does he say? Good morning, is there a problem with my meeting? I have waited a long time for a meeting and my employers need my transcripts ASAP. Thank you, Chandler. Email 22, again on the 28th, Alyssa Brandt emails Chandler Halderson back regarding that same subject matter. What does she say? Your advisor will contact you directly. The advisement director is handling the situation as we speak. If there are changes, you will be made aware shortly. 21, on the 28th again, Mr. Halderson, back to Ms. Brandt, same subject line. He responds, what? Okay, thank you. Email 20, again on the 28th, Mr. Halderson to Ms. Brandt, same subject line. Could you read the body of that email? My meeting was altered. Is there a person I can call? I need answers to my questions, ASAP. Email 19. Again on the 28th, from Alyssa Brandt to Chandler Halderson, same subject line of schedule changes. Uh, could you read the body of that email, please? I will find someone free to call you. Thank you for your patience. Email 18, we're still on the 28th, from Alyssa Brandt to Chandler Halderson, uh, regarding the schedule changes. Uh, what does uh, Ms. Brandt say to Mr. Halderson? Your phone number is 920-838-4549, correct? Uh, and then just a question, that is in fact Mr. Halderson's cell phone number? Yes, it is. Okay. Number 17, still on the 28th, Mr. Halderson emails Alyssa Brandt um, regarding that exact question. What does he say? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Email 16, the 28th still, Alyssa Brandt emails Chandler Halderson, same subject line, read that email. Great. I'm still doing my best to find someone free to give you a call, but I'm positive I'll find someone. Thank you for your patience. Email 15, Mr. Halderson emails Alyssa Brandt. Uh, same day, same subject line, could you read that one? Could I please have your phone number so you could help shed light on this situation? Uh, there was no response to that email with a phone number or anything because the next email is on the first, correct? That's correct. Okay, email 14, uh, June 1st, uh, 2021. Um, from Chandler Halderson to Alyssa Brandt uh, regarding those schedule changes. What does that email read? Good afternoon. I'm checking to see if there's been any progress on the documents I requested. Is there any news? Thank you, Chandler. Hi, 13, so cut off a bit here, but uh, this one is uh, June 1st, 2021, uh, from Alyssa Brandt to Chandler Halderson, same subject line. Uh, could you read that response? Sorry for the late response. I'm running around grabbing everything on my spare time. It's been a hectic day due to recent events. Thanks for your patience, Alyssa. Okay. June 1st, uh, 2021, Alyssa Brandt to Chandler Halderson, same subject line. Uh, what does she say here? I won't be able to access your transcripts or get the certification degree without the key to the records room. I'll let you know when it arrives. Uh, email 11, uh, June 4th, Mr. Halderson to Ms. Brandt, uh, same subject line. What do we have here? Could you add me to any open time for next week? And you added the word open just for the record. It's spelled wrong, correctly? I did in the email. It's spelled O-O-E-N. Thank you. Uh, email 10, uh, June 4th, 2021, Alyssa Brandt responds to Chandler Halderson in the schedule change email string and says what? 
Yeah, no problem. How does Thursday at 1130 sound? Email nine, no, June 4th, Chandler Halderson to Alyssa Brandt. Uh, he responds perfect. Correct. Okay. Email eight, uh, we're into a new uh, subject line. Uh, so the subject is just scheduling uh, from Chandler Halderson. Would you mind just opening the, the document to make to confirm which uh, who email eight was sent to? I know it was cut off here. So email eight is sent to Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com from Chandler. Um, subject is scheduling. The body is good morning. My advisor, Aaron, took today and tomorrow off. Who will I be sent to and at what time? Um, and we're going to have the same question for a couple of these. We just tried to fit them in the screen as best we could. Um, number seven, uh, that's uh, the June 10th, 2021 email re responding to scheduling. Uh, who are the parties in that email? Uh, this email is to Chandler Halderson from Alyssa Brandt. And could you read the body of that? Good morning, Chandler. You are not on the list to be picked up today. When was your meeting scheduled for? Uh, the same questions for uh, number six. Who are the parties of that email sent on June 10th? Uh, this email is to Alyssa Brandt from Chandler Halderson. Okay, and read the body if you could. It was for today at 11.30 with Aaron Hoover. Uh, number five, uh, same questions. Who were the parties in this June 10th email? Uh, it was obviously from Alyssa Brandt. Who was it to? Chandler Halderson. And uh, regarding scheduling, what did that read? Oh, no, I didn't give you a date. You are still set, excuse me, you are still all set for your meeting on June 17th next Thursday. I advise you to keep this meeting because the wait list is well past 50 students. Uh, question for number four, June 10th. Um, who were the parties of that email? This email is to Alyssa Brandt from Chandler Halderson. Okay, and read the body if you could. Is there still the possibility of me picking up the documents I requested, or has Aaron sent my transcripts already? Uh, number three, uh, email from uh, Bart Halderson uh, to Alyssa Brandt, 64, uh, responding, or it was a forward to schedule changes. The forward that appears in the subject matter indicates that at some point that email was, was forwarded? That's correct. Okay, and what does the email body read? Alyssa, this is unacceptable. We have been dealing with this issue for well over a year now. It has been costing us money the longer the delays have continued. I'm not sure of the professionalism of the advisors, but it sure seems like they will take off at the drop of a hat and it messes up the whole schedule. Chandler and I have both rearranged our schedules to meet with an advisor today, and I expect you to find a way to make that happen. Uh, email two uh, from Chandler Halderson to Alyssa Brandt, uh, subject uh, late. What does that read? I'm currently heading to the hospital. I will not make my meeting. I remember there is a wait list, but I still will need my meeting rescheduled as soon as possible. And number one, June 21st, 2021, from Chandler Halderson to Alyssa Brandt. Um, what does this say? Uh, the subject is contact information. The body is, is there a phone number I could call for getting a new appointment? And that was the last email uh, in that grouping? That's correct. Okay. A couple of the same questions. When it comes to Alyssa Brandt, um, did it appear to you in reviewing those emails that she was purporting to be a student advisor at Madison College or MATC? It did. And did she ever advise any students other than Chandler Halderson? No, she did not. Showing you exhibit number 565 again. When it comes to Alyssa Brandt, uh, who's second in the column there, um, is the IP address that that account was created at, Alyssa Brandt 64 at gmail.com, is that the Halderson uh, Holmes IP address? 
Yes, it is. And the birth date used when that account was created, is that Chandler Halderson's birthday? Yes, it is. So there was a mention in these emails of someone named Aaron Hoover. You looked into that email account as well? Yes, we did. I'm showing you what's been marked in this case, exhibit number 476. Uh, could you just page through that and make sure um, you could answer the question of, of what are you looking at there? Or what is that document? Uh, 476 is the Aaron period Hoover MATC at gmail.com Google search warrant return uh, specifically the emails uh, I'll move 476 in evidence subject to any subject objection. to any prior rulings uh, no further objection it is received sure. and, I and it may be published. published thank you judge um, let's start with email 17 um, I, th I think we're all used to this now but what is email 17 uh, email 17 is from Google in regards to finish setting up your new Google account. Sure. And uh, this one was on what date was this Google account set up? May 28th, 2021. Okay. Uh, let's talk about email 16 from Aaron Hoover, M-A-T-C at gmail.com to Chandler Halderson. Uh, subject is new schedule. Schedule is spelled wrong, but it's, it's new schedule. Could you read the body of that email for us? Good morning. My name is Aaron Hoover from Madison College's advisement team. Today we are missing three advisors. Following the first come, first serve policy, I will be taking some meetings from an absent coworker. My meetings will stay on course until 1230, and then I will be taking over Ryan's meetings starting at 1. If you were meeting with Ryan today at 10 a.m., you are now at 1 p.m. with me. If you are with me after 1230 today, you will be with me on Tuesday morning. So my 1 p.m. meeting from today will be moved to 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. If there are questions or scheduling issues, contact me or Alyssa Brandt. My apologies for the inconvenience, Aaron Hoover. Email 15, May 28th, 2021. Uh, if you could in the binder, I, I, again, we're trying to format these to fit the screen. Uh, that was from Chandler Halderson. Who is that email to? Email 15 is from Chandler Halderson to Aaron Hoover. Okay, and uh, same subject line, uh, what does that read? Unfortunately, I need my meeting to happen today. My employer and insurance need my transcripts and to see proof of my completion of my degree and solar certificate. I have been trying to get a meeting for a very long time and I very well could lose my job over this. Is there a time you could put me in? 14, um, who was that email from and to? Email uh, 14 is to Chandler Halderson from Aaron Hoover. Okay, and uh, same subject line. Could you read the body of that email for me? I'm sorry to hear that, but we must follow policy on these difficult days. I will contact your employers for you if that will help out in any way. Uh, email 13, again, if you could tell us the parties of this email. Email 13 is to Aaron Hoover from Chandler Halderson. Same subject line, would you mind reading the body of the email? Alyssa put me on the waiting list on the number one slot earlier this week. Does that apply to today if there are any cancellations during the changed scheduling? Email 12, again, who are the parties of this email? This email is to Chandler Halderson from Aaron Hoover. Right. And uh, the subject line is the same. Could you read the body for me? Yes, that will apply. If there is a cancellation of the updated schedule, you will receive an automated call to your cell, 920-838-4549, of the time, building, and advisor you will be meeting with. There is no guarantee I will be hosting your meeting unless it is on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Email 11, May 28, 2021. Who are the parties to that email? 
Email 11 is to Aaron Hoover from Chandler Halderson. Yeah, same subject line. What does the body read? I can't tell you how many times I've heard this and never gotten in a meeting. Is there a phone number I can call for a more detailed explanation? Same day, Mr. Halderson, uh, and that one is to Mr. Hoover? That's correct. Okay. Same subject line, if you could read the body for the record. I need to have a call with whomever is in charge in the next 30 minutes. I have been a student for over three years and I will be treated fairly. Number nine, uh, again on the 28th, who are the parties to that email? Uh, email nine is to Chandler Halderson from Aaron Hoover. All right, uh, and uh, if you could uh, read the body of that email. I understand. I have forwarded your information to her now with a priority mark. She will be conducting meetings herself today, so her availability is limited. Email eight from Mr. Halderson to Mr. Hoover. Now we have a different subject line. This one's status. Um, could you read the body of that email? Good morning. I canceled the meeting for today because of work conflict and emailed you a list of questions and documents I need. When do you think I will be able to pick them up? Also, when, when I do get them, I have a few extra questions. Thank you, Chandler. Email seven, uh, June 1st, 2021, from Mr. Hoover to Mr. Halderson. The, same sub, or the subject line is now in response to, uh, what does the body say? Good morning, Chandler. I'm sorry you can't make the meeting. I will gather the documents and let you know when I can get your certificate card and degree. In the meantime, I'll electronically send your transcripts and degrees out to the respective employer insurance agency. I will have Alyssa give you a call when everything is complete. Good luck on your meeting, Aaron Hoover. Number six, um, this is on June 1st. Who are the parties to this email? Email six is to Chandler Halderson from Aaron Hoover. And uh, regarding that same subject matter, could you read the body? Unfortunately, I don't have your insurance on file. Is there someone specific I can send them to? Number five, uh, who are the parties to this email? Uh, email five is to Aaron Hoover from Chandler Halderson. Same subject matter, would you mind reading the body for the record? Okay, thank you. You can send the official link to bhalderson at bdo.com so he can forward it to the right people. Email four uh, from Mr. Hoover uh, to Chandler Halderson, correct? That's correct. All right, now different subject matter, now it's absence. Uh, what does Mr. Hoover have to say on June 10th? Dear students, I am taking the rest of the week off due to a family emergency. If possible, my meetings will be reassigned by availability and relevance. If you have any questions, please give our secretary, Alyssa, a call or email. My apologies, Aaron Hoover. Email three, uh, the 10th, could you please tell us the parties to this email? Email three is to Aaron Hoover from Chandler Halderson. Uh, same subject matter and all in response to that subject matter, uh, please read the body. Have I been picked up by a different advisor and at what time? Email two from Mr. Hoover, matc at gmail.com to Chandler Halderson. New subject line here, meeting time and date. Uh, would you mind reading the body for the court record? Good afternoon, Chandler. I'm sorry to hear about your recent trip to the ER. I have scheduled you two appointments, so if there's a conflict with the first, there's always a second. July 20th at 2.45 p.m. and July 23rd at 10.30 a.m. If neither of these work, let me know as soon as possible. In the meantime, you are holding slot number 22 on the wait list. And number one. Uh, number one is just a, a Google email that we've looked at before. Yes, it is. So the last email um, in any of these accounts is the 29th of June, 2021. That's correct. A couple of the same questions as before, as it comes to Mr. Aaron Hoover, M-A-T-C at gmail.com. Um, he was purporting to be an advisor at Madison College. Yes, he was. Did he ever advise any students other than Chandler Halderson? No, he did not. And looking at exhibit 565, the IP address used to create that Gmail account, is that the IP address of the Halderson household? 
Yes, it is. Okay. No further questions. Cross-examination? No, thank you. Thank you, detective. You can return back to the table. Counsel, it's been 90 minutes. Would this be a good point to break, or do you have something very short? Uh, this would be a fine point to break. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take our morning break at this point, then. Thank you. All right, for the jury.